Hello and welcome back to Model Railroading 101. I'm John and today I'm going to talk to you about operating sessions. On the last episode of Model Railroading 101, Seth Newman gave us an overview of several different styles of operating model railroad layouts in the intro to operations. Op sessions can range from very simple to very complicated, and there are several different categories they can fall into. So the next and obvious step to me is to take a closer look at each one, starting with the less formal styles and progressively notching up to the more complex ones. So with that said, I'd like to share a personal experience with you as a preface to this episode. I participated in an op session for the first time ever last year on the Carcanus Model Railroad Society's layout in Crockett, California. You may recall I even published a video about that experience right here on the channel. The CMRS runs an organized yet pretty informal style of ops referred to as car card ops. It's easy to understand and it doesn't require a lot of memorization or prior experience. For that reason, it's ideal for people just starting out in operations. I'd like to set you up now with some of the layout's features using some of the concepts from our last episode when Seth talked about a layout having a story and a purpose and a transportation plan and that kind of thing. So the layout at the CMRS represents the former Southern Pacific line that runs between Oakland, California and Sparks, Nevada. It's set up with about half a dozen major industries most if not all of which represent historically and regionally accurate places. Some even still exist today. There are also some elements that were added for operational interest, and there's also a freelanced branch line to supply raw materials to some of the industries on the main part of the layout. So, obviously the purpose is to move raw materials and finished products between industries and what we'll call their final destinations on the layout. There are also passenger stations, which of course means there are passenger trains. The transportation plan might vary from session to session, and that information is communicated during a meeting that the operators attend just prior to each operating session. On this layout, the transportation plan tends to adhere to transition era rules, which give passenger trains the priority over all other trains. These sessions do not have a dispatcher, so the yard masters at the three major yards are in charge of breaking up arriving trains and assembling consists for local deliveries. These yard masters also assemble trains for mainline runs to the other major yards. Several local trains handle the jobs between the yards and the local industries they're assigned to, and they also do the switching at the nearby industries. Mainline freights haul cars to and from the major yards. Passenger trains are added to the mix to create challenges for the freight operators, and through freights can also be added to increase traffic on the line if there are enough operators. So let's head out to the CMRS. We arrive just in time to attend the pre-session meeting. Liam Hart is in charge of this session, so he's briefing the operators before the session starts. As I mentioned a moment ago, this meeting provides the operators the context for the session today and it makes them all aware of any track closures or other hazards that have been added to make the session more fun. Operators also get direction about which trains have priority and which jobs will be running on the layout today. Now everybody, let's go have fun. <laughs> Hello, my name is Liam Hart and I am the sort of operations leader of the Carquinos Motor Railroad Society here in Crockett, California. We do car cart operations, which is one of the more simple types of operations you can do with a motor railroad. Say you have a freight car. My example would be a bulkhead or a center beam log car or lumber car. And it's up at our lumber mill outside of Sparks. It needs to go to Ashby Lumber in Oakland. Say we have this car sitting here waiting to be picked up. We have our branch line flyer, go and grab it off the branch line. The branch line flyer will take it back to Sparks. That's one operator. He has something to do. He's got to pick up a car. It goes back to the Sparks yard. That's another car the yard master has to bang into a freight train. 
So that's another person working with this car. And this is still a simple system. The car is then added to a freight train going to Oakland, which then another operator takes that card for that car and adds it and takes it to Oakland. The car is then left in Oakland for a local to take to Ashby Lumber. And this car basically has gone the entire layout because of how our system works. Instead of just, oh, here's a lumber car. Let's have it run around for a bit. There's this lumber car that has a purpose. Every single industry on our layout with the car card system has a sister industry. We have a car card. The car card has a picture of the car, information for the car, like its reporting mark and what type of car it is. So say, like I said earlier, with a bulkhead or a center beam, you know, it's a bulkhead or a center beam with a, either with or without a lumber load. Um, and it'll give you the reporting mark and the car number. And we ha tend to have, not everyone does, but we tend to have a big picture of what the car is. So you can see the car. Inside the little pouch where the picture is, we have what is known as a waybill. The waybill represents the load and where the car is going. So for our center beam, say is from the branch line. Now we can have two different types of waybill here. We can have one that says it goes to Ashby Lumber or our other lumber industry that I'm blanking on right now. And that'll say this car is going from the, lum the branch line to Ashby Lumber with a lading of Georgia Pacific Lumber. We'll just use that as an example. My basic joke about our ops for its simplicity is if you know everything, come on down. If you know nothing, come on down. If you think you know everything, come on down. We're a very easy to get into operation session. We start the day usually with a morning briefing, which usually takes about 10 minutes, where uh, we have a sign-up sheet that goes live about a week before, and that sign-up sheet um, lists all of our jobs on it. And I read off all those jobs about who got them and you know what they're doing, which most of the people know what job they signed up for. Because the CMRS has a fairly large layout, there's room for a lot of jobs. The regular sign-up sheet has 20 regular jobs, including four yard masters, one assistant yard master, six local freights, and several mainline passenger and freight jobs. Other jobs can be created as needed. So one of the things that is an important part of our layout is we have yard masters. The yard masters cover switching in the yards 100% and they do everything in these yards. We do have both Oakland and Sparks have a train set up ready to go to a sister yard at the beginning of the session just so we have something for someone to do. But after that, they got to build every single train that goes out. Uh, they do all the work. And they're kind of our impromptu dispatchers, you know, like on a real road, you know, you have to call a, you know, yard master when you're coming into, say, you know, on the Union Pacific coming into Oakland. You know, you can't just show up and be like, hey, I just left cars, you know, somewhere, you know, because who knows where you'd have left them. Then they got to figure out where they are. Is that you come in and, you know, say you're coming around the big curve into Oakland we have on the layout and you go and talk to our yard master there and say, hey, I have so and so cars and he'll give you orders. Now, usually with the two big yards, he'll run you through the reversing loop, make it a little easier for you. Uh, you'll come in, you'll cut your engines off and run back and grab your caboose. Sometimes they'll switch your caboose out for you, sometimes they won't, depends on who's running the yard. Uh, and you run your engines out of the way. And he'll break up your train and, you know, put it on whatever tracks it's supposed to go to. Usually it'll go over to the local yard. That's just how this works. We have these yard masters that are really good and, you know, it's, some of the yards are a little harder than others and some of the yards are, you know, a little more intensive than others. Port Costa, can either be a very hectic yard with three tracks or a very empty yard. I've run it multiple times. It's probably my favorite job on the railroad. And I've had one session where at the end of the day, that yard was packed full and I couldn't find a place to put my engines. And I've had one day where that yard was completely empty and I had nothing else to do halfway through the session. No two sessions at this club will and have ever been the same. And that's what makes it fun. You know, even with it being car cards, you know, we some people say, you know, oh, well, it's always the same. It's like, no, ours are never the same. I've been doing this, as I said, for just about a year now, and I've never had a session where it's been the complete same. Even when I've run the same job two weekends in a row, it's always different. One of the best things about running here at the Carquinez Motor Road Society during our informal ops is it's very informative. Um, you don't get yelled at because we're very, you know, we're laid back. 
That's the general thing. And it's very enjoyable. And it's one of probably in the Bay Area, and I don't want to brag, but it's one of probably in the Bay Area, one of the best for someone who doesn't know ops and wants to get started. You know, you, if you can come in here and by your second run, you know what you're doing for the most part. I feel like that's a good system. And, you know, anybody is welcome to come on down. You know, it's our fourth Saturday. Uh, just go on our website, cmrstrainclub.org, and you'll see a sign up both for we have a uh, switch list operations, if that's more your thing, which is the third Saturday. And we have the car cart operations, which is the fourth Saturday, if that's more your thing. You know, do whatever. Uh, anyway, come on down to the CMRS and give operations a try. So what was going to happen was, I thought I might run a train today, but there's a professional here who's much better at this and knows this layout better. You may remember Marty. He's been on Chasing Trains. He was uh, Mary once and Snake Hunter once. Oh, I think God. Snake Hunter was last I time. I forget. I forget. But he has a, a great lash-up of CN power here, and he's, we're down in the Oakland Yard now, and he's about to pick up his train. So take it away maybe you can tell people what you're going to do and how this is going to work basically what's happened this train originally came out of sparks we brought a train down from sparks into oakland the engines have now gone to the diesel facility and have been serviced they're now ready to go back onto the layout and take a train eastbound which is what we're about to do what i need to do now is to bring the consist out attached to the caboose put the caboose on the track that we're going to take up to Sparks and then move the power to the other end and we'll go eastbound from the other end of the yard. This procedure that we're doing is normally something that the yard takes care of and we'll put the caboose on and have the consist ready for us to go. The yard is extremely busy today so I have opted or was given instructions let's say to use the power to reposition the caboose onto our consist. So that's what we're doing now. We're almost done and we'll be ready to go. So Marty will run around his consist and once he's attached on the front end, he'll talk to the yard master and get clearance to depart the yard. Okay, so our train power now is back on the uh, consist that we're going to take eastbound. We've checked with the yard master. The yard master has given us our manifest list of car cards. These car cards are all the ones that are in the train that we're going to be taking eastbound. So what we're doing now is going to start heading out eastbound, and into the main line just up here, and continue eastbound. Most of the stuff that's coming here is in any place else at this station. One of the cool things about operating on a large layout like this is that you end up meeting other trains. In this case, Marty's train is meeting a westbound that's headed for the Oakland Yard that we just departed. At this point in our journey, we're passing through Crockett and going by the CNH plant. There are some switching movements that are sometimes in effect or in process as we go through here, so it's something we need to watch. Once as we go through Crockett and approach Port Costa, which is behind me on the right there, there are some switching movements being made at this time. So we need to watch, make sure our tracks are cleared, 
and then we still have the right-of-way on the main line. As I mentioned earlier, there are sometimes switch movements going on in Port Costa. There are today. I have checked with the Port Costa Yardmaster. He's given us the approval to continue eastbound, and he is clear of the mainline track. We're about to arrive in Martinez. Martinez is a passenger station stop. Passenger trains are clear at this point in time, so we won't have to stop or wait and give them priority. Passenger trains do have priority on the layout. Earlier today, we had decided, uh, because it's an operation session, to add a little bit of color to our operation session was to take one of the main lines out of, out of service. Uh, unfortunately, one of the switches is not functioning properly up above there, so we had to put the main line back into operation. So right now we're approaching Martinez. We will not stop because we are a freight train and we will continue eastbound on up to uh, actually Sacramento. I believe I may have said earlier that this train was bound for Sparks. It is actually going to Sacramento. Continuing on eastbound, we are about to enter the North Helix that will take us up to Davis and the train will enter here and it's about uh, two minutes to go completely around through the helix and make it to the upper level. We now are approaching our final destination, which is the Sacramento Yard. Behind me, you find, see the Sacramento Yardmaster. We need to check with him to see which track he wants us to come in on, and we'll hand over our manifest cards, our waybills and our car cards. The way that we're pro approaching Sacramento is from the west, going east. To get into this yard, we have to go past the yard and then back into the yard on the track that he assigns us. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to talk to the yard master, get us on a, a track, and we'll back into Sacramento, and that will be the end of this particular train's uh, routing. At this point, Marty has cut off his caboose, and he'll use the crossover to back his consist into the Sacramento yard, temporarily blocking the westbound main. The reason this maneuver is necessary is that there isn't a working crossover at the west entrance of the Sacramento yard at this time. So at this point, Marty's run is basically over. He's backed his train onto the correct track that was designated by the yardmaster here in the Sacramento yard. And what he could do is check with the Sparks yardmaster, which is also on this same level, and see if there are any trains that need to run out of Sparks, or check with the Oakland yardmaster, which is the level below us, to see if there are any trains there. And he could run his power light to one or the other yard. As it stands right now, the Sacramento yard doesn't have any trains that need to be taken out of it. So he's pretty much done. Thanks, Liam and Marty. So as you can see, operating on a layout with a lot of other operators does not have to be complicated or intimidating. As Liam said, these sessions are purposely less complicated so that beginners can cut their teeth without fear of messing up. I can also tell you from my own personal experience, as this was the first layout I ever operated on in the context of an organized operating session, it was very enjoyable for me too. Operating in sessions like this, until you're comfortable with it, can make the transition to the next level much smoother. Now of course, if this is what you enjoy, it's easy to have fun doing it this way every time. You can learn more about the Carquinas Model Railroad Society and sign up for an op session at their website, cmrstrainclub.org. I want to remind you that 
This program is intended to provide basic information and to explain one of the ways people organize and operate a model railroad layout in a realistic manner. Not everyone who runs car card ops will do it the exact same way. Car cards are utilized in some of the other more complicated styles of op sessions too. So understanding what they are and how they work is pretty important if you want to progress on to more complicated styles of operating. What you've seen here today is simply to share how one such group does it and to show how much fun you can have doing it as well. If you have an idea for a Model Railroading 101 topic, please put a comment below and subscribe now so you don't miss anything. I also encourage you to visit opsig.org to learn more about more formal approaches as well. One last thing, did you know that you can help promote the hobby by supporting this channel on Patreon? Go to patreon.com slash TSG Multimedia to learn how you can help for as little as 7 cents a day. Thanks for watching and make it a great day. Car cards is one of several methods used to make operations. <laughs> I am like terrible. Uh, are you, yeah. <laughs> that was a great start. Yeah. So much fun. So much fun. Fun is my number one rule. As long as everybody's having fun out there, I'm happy. Because that's what this is about, is having fun. It shouldn't feel like a job. It should be fun.